Welcome back to Stereochemistry Problems. And in this video, we're gonna be dealing with determining RS on a Newman projection. Now, if you saw the previous video on determining RS on a sawhorse projection, you're already actually halfway there. Because I think that the easiest, fastest, best way to determine RS on a Newman projection is actually to convert it into a sawhorse. And from there, we've already seen how to go from a sawhorse to a line wedge diagram. And it actually won't take that long. So let's just get these, uh, the, the second set of problems out of the way. And let's just focus on number one here. And we're gonna go through this in detail. Right, we're back. So just a reminder uh, of how the sawhorse projection works, if you have already forgotten or never learned in the first place. So the sawhorse, we're always looking at something from this perspective or this perspective, a little bit like what you'd see in a perspective a photograph, like this road, for example. The stuff in the front is always going to be on the bottom of the sheet and the stuff in the back is always going to be nearer to the top. Okay, And that's the same deal with our sawhorse projection or you're using a sawhorse projection. Whatever's in front in a Newman projection, remember here, this is the group that's in front. This is going to be on the bottom and whatever's in the back is going to be on the top. And we can slope it either direction from bottom left to top right or bottom right to top left, either way. Uh, so actually I kind of prefer doing it from bottom left to top right, so we're just going to do it that way, but you can do it either way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take what's in the front here and essentially just copy it. Okay, so you notice that um, this is drawn up to the side, to the side, 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and then on the back we have 6 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Okay, we're just just copying everything. H, O, H, B, R, H, C, H, 3, C, H, 3. Okay. And uh, here's our our carbon-carbon our bond, which is connecting the two. And now we have a sawhorse projection. We've gone from our Newman to a sawhorse. And how do we go from a sawhorse to a line wedge diagram? Because if it's really going to be determining RNS, it's going to be a lot easier on a, on a line wedge diagram for most people. So how do we do go about doing that again? Well, remember that whatever's pointing straight up is going to be in the same plane as whatever's at our carbon-carbon bond here, and it's going to be the same plane as whatever else is pointing straight up or straight down. So this is 12 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock. They're all in the same plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to swing this group in the back to the right here so that they're in the same plane. And um, just so that we're on, just while we're on this topic, just note that, see how this OH is on the same side as the CH3? And that this CH3 here is on the same side as that bromine, okay? Notice they're on the same side. So we're not doing any bond rotations, we're just doing a change in perspective. We're just swinging it out. Um, we're rotating the whole molecule at a time. So when we do that, when we swing the back out, what we're going to see is something like this. Everything that's in the plane here is going to now be in the plane of the page. And so we're not going to have something in the front, something in the back. They're all going to be in the plane of the page, uh, at least the blue things here. And now this OH, since we've turned the back out, is going to be pointing out at us. It's going to be a wedge. And the CH3 is going to be pointing out at us, which is also going to be a wedge. Now this CH3 in the back is now going to be a dash. And this BR is also on the same side as CH3. It's also going to be a dash. Okay, so we have converted our sawhorse to a line diagram. Now the next step is determining R and S. So how do we go, do, go about doing that on our line diagram here? Well, let's have a look. How many chiral centers do we have? Uh, you might note that uh, we have one carbon which actually is attached to two identical groups. CH3 is the same as H3C. So there's actually no chiral center here. There is a chiral center here, however. We look, we've got H, OH, BR, and carbon attached to two CH3s and an H. Those are four different groups. So that is going to be a chiral center. Now, how do we determine the priority? Well, it's all according to atomic number, uh, unless there's any ties. So let's see, we've got bromine, which is going to be number one, oxygen, number two, 
carbon will be number three, hydrogen will be number four, and now the next step is to uh, determine RNS, that we have our priorities. Now, unfortunately, um, one thing for us here is that H, our number four group, is not a wet, not a dash, it's not in the back. If it was, then we'd be able to quickly go in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction to determine this is S. If it was a wedge, it would be not, it, almost as easy. We'd just do the same thing, but we'd flip the result at the end. Here it's in the plane of the page, and this can sometimes be a little bit tricky, but there is a way out that makes it easier to figure out R and S on this. So what we're gonna do, what I advise doing, when your number four group is on the plane of the page, is you're gonna we're gonna do what's called a single swap. And we're gonna swap this number four group with whatever's in the back, which happens to be this bromine. We're gonna leave the rest of the molecule completely alone. And so that is gonna put our bromine on top like that. And let's just, don't even need to draw dashes and wedges for the CH3s because there's no stereo center there. And we're gonna keep our OH the same, it's still a wedge. And we are going to have a hydrogen here. Now, when we do a single swap, this is not, um, we can't get this from bond rotation. Uh, what we've done is we've basically broken carbon hydrogen and broken carbon bromine and swapped them. So you can't actually do this chemically. Um, we're doing this on paper. And what this does, anytime we, we interconvert two groups on a chiral center, we're gonna flip R to S or S to R and vice versa. In other words, it inverts that chiral center. Uh, but the purpose of inverting the chiral center here is that it's a lot easier to determine R and S uh, when we do so. So using those same priorities that we determined earlier, one, two, three, and four, uh, and once we did, we've done this, we've changed it into uh, the, the opposite, we're gonna have to flip it back afterwards. That's the whole point. So one, two, three, and four is in the back. So you notice that this goes in a counterclockwise direction. So we would normally say, and, num and H is in the back. So we'd normally say that this is S because we're going in a counterclockwise direction, number four is in the back. However, we did this single swap. And anytime doing a single swap, you're gonna invert R to S or S to R, vice versa. So this is the single swap of this, which means that this is the inverted stereo center of this, which means that if this is S, this must be R. So this stereo center here is R. So this is how we determine R and S on a Newman projection. Start off converting it into a sawhorse, which is actually pretty easy, and then swing it around so we have a line diagram. Sometimes we have a problem where number four groups in the plane of the page, we can flip that around like we have actually in previous videos, and we have our RS value, which is R. So we're gonna apply the same strategy to these other four problems, and uh, we'll see that in just a second. This video is just a small excerpt from the Crash Course in Stereochemistry, which has over three hours of solved problems in stereochemistry. If you found it useful, please upvote, share, or comment. Thanks.